Hey guys, my name's Austin and welcome to the Outjeeping YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing some rocker panel replacement on this 99 Jeep Cherokee. Now today we're going to be doing the 2x6 square steel rocker replacement. It's going to act as a rock slider as well as replacing our rusty rocker panels and making the Jeep nice and strong as well as looking better. Now if you guys saw my previous video, we got started on replacing the floor pans on the passenger side. So we're going to start over there by putting the 2x6 rocker into place. So let's get started. All right, so we're starting over here on the passenger side of the Jeep. If you guys haven't seen my last video on uh, replacing the floor pans part one, you might want to check it out to see where we've gotten so far um, with the interior ripped out as well as putting some new floor pans in on this side. But if you guys are all caught up to speed, um, basically this is where we sit with the old rocker panel. Um, there's not much really held on here. I did a little bit of cutting, but uh, most of it just kind of rusted out on itself. And as you can see, we got some other damage that we're going to have to start repairing um, as we get the rest of it cut out and before we put that new 2x6 uh, piece of steel in here. Um, so as you can see with the B pillar, there's some holes here and over here on the inner rocker towards the back underneath the rear door, there's a couple little holes. So we're going to have to cut all that out, put a new piece of sheet metal into place and then we should be able to fit up the new 2x6 rocker. So to start off to give us some more room and for filming purposes, um, I'm actually going to take off this rear passenger door over here. Um, one, because I got new doors anyway that are going to be thrown on here and these ones are all pretty much rotted out. Um, and it's going to give us more room to work um, for getting that inner rocker replaced, filming, as well as replacing this little piece on the B pillar. But to give a general overview on what we're going to be doing, um, where we're going to be cutting on the old existing rocker to fit into place, Basically, we're going to follow this line right here on the edge, which is the top of the rocker as it comes up the side. We're going to be making a nice clean cut right there and hopefully using whatever metal we have um, left over on the old rocker to weld to the new 2x6 rocker. Now, as far as underneath, I'll have to show you guys later, but basically we're going to be cutting out the inner rocker all the way up flush to the floor. Um, so we're going to have a nice 90 degree angle right there so that way we can fit our rocker straight in. And then we're going to be welding on some sheet metal tabs onto the inner rocker over here. So that way when we fit in our 2x6 rocker, we'll take those sheet metal tabs, fold it under. And that's going to be our support from the back side. Um, and then once we get everything welded into place, we're also going to be adding some frame supports out of some 2x4 steel and welding that directly to the frame. But we'll get more in depth as we go along. First things first, I want to get this rear door out of the way so that way we have more room to work. And uh, these doors are basically held in by Torx bolts on the 97 to 01. Um, I believe they are T40. Um, hopefully they come off. There sometimes could be a pain in the butt, especially if you live in the rust belt. On the lower hinge, the bolts kind of like to be stuck on there and they like to break those Torx bits. So uh, what I might end up doing is actually taking off the door panel and you can fit a uh, blowtorch through there and kind of heat up that plate that's threaded um, where the bolts go into and usually they break free by then. All right, so for a quick overview on getting these doors off, um, so we basically have the hinge bolts over here, which are gonna be a T40. Um, the top ones broke free, but the bottom ones did not. So what I'm gonna do is actually take off this panel and I can fit a blowtorch inside there, heat up that plate where it's threaded into and hopefully they break free. So I'm gonna take off this panel. They're just some Phillips screws and it's basically clipped in the rest of the way. Um, then we got some, a couple of rod linkages over here for the handle and the lock. And then we also have a door check that we got to pound out the pin and then take this boot off here with our electrical connector. And if you have the trim off on the inside, you got the electrical connector right here that you can just unplug from the rest of the harness. Now if you have a trim panel removal tool, this will be ideal, but I don't. So I'm just going to have to use a screwdriver and some hands pry it out of place. We also got an electrical connector on the back where our switch is, we'll undo that. Then we got our rods, swing those out of place. If you guys want a close up on this, I got another video on replacing a door regulator um, where I go more in depth and kind of show you guys. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'll post in the link below. So I'm just going to peel this boot 
out of its hole from the uh, pillar side. Then it can feed the wire harness through. So now I'm just pounding the pin out for the door check. I'm just going to pull the wire harness through the rest of the door. That way I don't melt it accidentally in case I have to reuse it when I put on the new doors. So I'll get our torch, heat that up on the inside over here, and then we'll get them out. All right, so a little update on getting this rear door off. The uh, top bolts broke free fine. The bottom ones, that's another story since it's so rusty down there. I tried heating it up from the inside and putting some penetrating fluid on it, and it just really wasn't helping. I ended up snapping one of my T40 bits. Had to run to the store, bought like a few more since they're only a few bucks a piece. Um, and then I got one of them off with the impact, another one snapped, and then another one I had to cut off because it was stripped out. So down here, it's all ready to come out. It's just held in by two bolts up here, which we can access when we get the front door open. So I'm just gonna zip those out. I got it closed for now. Then we can pretty much take this door off once we get these bolts out. the uh, door and the hinge. We'll have to keep those when we put the new ones on. All right, so with that door off, we can see a lot better on what we're working with here. So to start off with, I'm gonna make the first cut, um, which is basically cutting along this line right here. And that's basically the welding point where we're gonna weld the existing rocker panel to the new two by six one. That's gonna help clear some things up here. And also I'm gonna finish cutting up the inner rocker that's underneath here and make it flush to the bottom of the floor pan. Um, so that way there's a nice 90 degree um, angle there with the floor pan and that way it should slide right into place um, I am gonna have to do a little bit repair on this B pillar here because it's it's pretty bad So I kind of drew out a line with a sharpie roughly where I'm gonna cut basically just this top sheet metal piece That's spot welded to this uh, top of the rocker I'm gonna cut that out I'm gonna hammer out all of those uh, spot welds and then clean it up um, Make a, a new sheet metal piece that I can weld into this and weld directly back over that and then I think I might have to make a flange because um, this is pretty much rotted out here and we need that to uh, weld onto the new rocker. But if you guys are following along and doing this at home and you don't have as much rust as I do, basically just want to start off by cutting this line right here, going all the way to the back. And then once we get back here, I'm probably going to take off this flare. I still do want to keep these factory fender flares for as long as I can. Um, either way, I'm going to have to cut it to be able to fit the new rocker panel in place. Um, but we still have to cut the metal behind that. So I think I'm just gonna pop these off for now and we'll continue cutting the metal, but I'll show you guys when we get there um, because I still do need to do some more patching. As you can see, the rust just starts to climb up here. There's some rust up there. And then I got to replace the inner rocker right here where the rear seat bracket is because there's some holes going through there as well. So on the bottom of these flares, they're held in by a quarter inch sheet metal screw. So we'll zip that out quick. Then this flare, we're basically just going to have it detach from the bracket. The bracket bolts are going to snap anyway, so we'll have to address that when the time comes. Pull up on it, and it pops out of place. There we go. So we'll have to continue our cut right here and keep going all the way into the rear wheel well. And basically, it comes back in in the rear wheel well. We'll have to cut the sheet metal behind it um, to the thickness of the 2x6. But it looks like I'm going to have to replace this as well because. I can't weld to rust. All right, so I got most of this top section all cut off here. Um, now looking underneath what I was talking about before with the inner rocker, um, this is kind of what we want it to look like right here. A nice 90 degrees from the floor and then up through the inner rocker. So we still have a little bit to cut off yet over here. I'm basically going to come from the back side and just kind of use the cutoff wheel and cut all this uh, cut all this rusted metal off and that should be a nice clean 90 degrees. As you can see way up here we do have a hole in the inner rocker so I'm going to have to cut out all this from the inside and uh, patch that in as well.
All right, so a little update. It is the next day here now, and I got a bunch of this other rust uh, cut out off camera. I got to replace the inner rocker over here on the back side. Um, but I just wanted to show you the piece of plate that's on the back here. Um, since I did cut off this flange and didn't put a new one on yet, I basically went off the measurement over here where I cut it, where the existing rocker was, and that's where basically the top of the two by six is gonna play. Um, and then took a level, just kind of measured it over here and made a rough sketch of where I'm gonna have to cut. Um, I did leave it a little bit long, probably an eighth of an inch. Um, that way we can use a, a flap disc if we have to grind it down in case it's not high enough. Um, that way we still have a good surface to weld on. That way we don't cut too much. So I'm gonna cut this right here. We do the same thing with the front side. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because I'm leaving the front fender on, but I do have it unbolted a little bit to be able to get an angle grinder in there. So it should work out, but I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But for right now, let's get this cut. All right, so I got our two by six piece of steel mocked up in here for now. This isn't the exact one I'm gonna use. This is a one from one I did my last Jeep, but it's a lot smaller. So I got some new stuff we're gonna be using later, but it's good for demonstration purposes um, on how we're gonna be able to fit this. As we're cutting out the sheet metal, there's gonna be a lot of putting this into place and taking it out, cutting a little bit more. Um, so as you can see, I just made that cut in the rear and I still have to go up higher. It's up flush um, with the uh, existing rocker up here in the front. But as you can see, as it comes back, we have a gap forming and it's because it's contacting the rear plate back here. So it looks like we have 3 16 to a quarter inch we gotta cut off. So we'll cut that off a little bit more and then work on the front. Another thing is, is that this two by six piece of steel isn't all the way in. Um, there is still a little bit of a gap. One from the new seat support that I made that I'm just gonna have to cut off a little bit more. And then also the seatbelt bolt. Um, there's a welded nut on the inside of the rocker that we're at the shave off just a little bit to be able to fit this flush to the inside rocker. Now looking at the inside of the rocker, we got our passenger front lower seat bolt over here. Um, it's actually a welded nut and there's a little bit of a plate here. We're at the just grind that off just a little bit, probably about a half inch. I once again just took a level from this outside lip over here and drew a line. Uh, we might have to grind a little bit on the square nut, but basically we want a nice flat surface for our new rocker panel to slide up against on the inner rocker. So this is an obstruction. It's going to cause some uh, clearance issues, so we'll cut that out. All right, so here's a piece of 2x6 steel that we're actually going to be using for this side over here. I had these uh, cut from the metal supplier at 72 inches, so that way I have enough uh, room to basically work. Um, we're still gonna have to shorten it up, but basically right now I'm gonna get this all prepped because um, we can't just weld it onto the Jeep right now. Well, technically you could if you don't want to cap the ends, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna copy the design I actually did on my last Jeep. The uh, front of the rocker is basically gonna have an angle coming up and these ends are gonna basically pinch together. And on the back side, I think I'm just gonna do a simple 45 degrees. Now one thing to keep in mind with this two by six steel is that it's welded on one side. On the uh, last set I had, they're actually welded on these thin sides. Um, and if you have that exposed onto the outside of the Jeep and you paint over it, you can sometimes still see that weld. Now on these ones, they're actually welded on the uh, main six inch section. Um, so the weld that we have here, I'm gonna actually have that face towards the bottom of the Jeep. And that's what we got going on right now. Um, the bottom side is facing up and I already drew out uh, roughly where I'm going to be cutting and folding for capping this end. Uh, so I came off three inches from the bottom over here and put a line there. That's basically where I'm going to fold down. And then I measured three inches going down into the uh, top of the rocker over here. So basically we're going to cut on that line and basically cut out this bottom triangle. It's going to fold down um, once we hammer it. Then we can squeeze it together with a uh, vice grip or clamps, tack it together, and then fully weld this up. Um, now there is a little feature I still want to do on this. So once I get this folded down, I'm actually going to have it also notch in a little bit. Um, I think it just gives a little bit cleaner look, but you don't have to do it. Um, but I'm going to add that once I start cutting this out and welding this main thing in. All right, so I got that hammered down most of the way and we just have a little bit of a lip right here, probably 3 16ths of an inch on this uh, bottom side. So we're gonna cut that off flush with the end of here and then we should be able to kind of tack these two pieces together. And then uh, when I do this one cut over here, it's gonna make a couple lines um, to cut out the top and the bottom and this little corner piece is gonna fold in like so.
All right, so this is what I came up with so far. I got this little corner piece kind of notched in. I basically went an inch from the end over here and just kind of cut out this triangle that's on the top and then went in an inch and cut out the triangle there, just made a straight line. Then I was able to take a hammer and it bends right into place. Um, there is a few gaps, but we'll massage the metal once again, um, getting this all into place, uh, just kind of using a vice grips here to kind of hold it because I'm gonna tack it all in then fully weld it, and then I'll take a grinder and smooth out all the welds, that way it's a nice round shape. All right, so this is the finished result over here on the front side. I got everything ground down and rounded. Overall, it looks pretty well. Um, there is a little bit of a weird kind of U-shape with this little tab I hammered in. I uh, hammered it in the middle and it kind of like bent into a U, so I wasn't able to get that out, but I don't think anyone will notice too much. I mean, there are a couple little divots from the welds. I went back and just kind of plug weld down any major ones that were in the way. But once we add paint on here, it's gonna look pretty much good. Um, and most of this is gonna be covered by the fender anyway. All you're gonna really see is just this outside piece. So now that we got this front side in, I'm gonna let it cool off because it's actually really hot right now. Um, we'll measure it out how long this needs to actually be, and we'll start capping off the rear end. All right, so cutting up front here for the new rocker behind the uh, fender, which is this piece right here, I just have a few bolts out of it because I'm too lazy to take off the whole thing because you have to take off the front clip. Um, so I just got it kind of pulled out of the way for now, so that way we can fit a uh, angle grinder in here and cut this last bit that's right here. I made this uh, pretty much flush to where I've cut it on the side of the rocker, so that way when we slap this up, it's going to be nice and flush and we should be able to weld to this line right here. Um, I did, once again, make it a little bit longer, so that way I don't accidentally cut too much and won't be able to weld. Um, if I leave a little bit longer there, I can just take a flap disc and keep grinding it down until it sits in there perfectly. So now I'm gonna cut this little piece right here and then that's pretty much everything else that's uh, any obstructions that's preventing the rocker panel from fitting in here nice. All right, so I test fit the two by six off camera and I decided that the overall length is gonna be 64 inches. And I measured from that uh, welded corner that we just made away on the front there and it's coming back all the way to 64 inches and this is gonna be facing towards the outside of the vehicle. And then what I'm gonna have is actually a angle cut going down to 62 inches over here. So basically when we cut this off, it's gonna be on an angle and we'll just have to simply put a 90 degree cap and finish that off there for the rear wheel well. All right, so we got our angle cut on the back side of the rocker and I also cut out a cap out of some eighth inch steel. It's gonna go right here. We're gonna tack it into place, fully burn it in and then grind off any of the edges and then uh, weld any more if I need to, if there's any holes. And then we should be pretty much done capping the ends on the rocker. All right, so we got the rear cap all squared away, welded in, ground down, and it's pretty much ready to go. Um, the only other prep work I gotta do to this is paint some PUR15 on the back side and uh, anything that's exposed. We won't cover that for now until we get this welded in and then we'll paint everything while we're in place. But we still got a little prep work to do on the Jeep side to get this all ready to weld in. We gotta add some rear supports that are gonna come from the inner rocker. They're basically just some sheet metal supports since there wasn't really much of the inner rocker left to uh, wrap up on the back side and weld in. So. Normally what I do is just take a, a few pieces of sheet metal, weld them to the inner rocker, and then when I weld this in, I'm gonna bend them onto the underside and weld that into the place. Now looking at the underside here where our new rocker is gonna be going into place, um, off camera in my last video, I actually added two of the tabs that are in the up front here. Um, and basically once we put the rocker in here, we're gonna hammer these and they're gonna fold up on the underside and then we can weld it into place. So that way it kind of attaches onto the backside here. And then we'll also add two frame supports that come from underneath the rocker and weld to our frame stiffener that we welded on uh, about a month ago. So I'm gonna add a couple more of these sheet metal brackets to the back here. Um, I got a little hole right here to patch up because that was spot welded where the seat belt bracket was. So I'll just patch that up and then all underneath here, I'm gonna wire wheel, take care of that POR15 it so that way nothing rots out in the future from inside. Now, as far as other patchwork that I have to do, such as this back here where I cut it out, since it's not necessarily gonna go all the way down where our rocker is, I'm actually going to patch this in once I get the uh, new rocker starting to weld in. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to patch this up while I have that structural support in here on the bottom. Then we'll grind everything down, 
and then paint our inside of the door sill on the bottom here. All right, so I went and got another rear support welded in here. Also plugged up that little hole, and I also had to weld in a new nut for the seatbelt because I tried grinding down that uh, square nut that was in there, and uh, I tried chiseling out the little piece. It actually just came off of this plate, so I just put a new 716 bolt in there, welded the nut on, so that's gonna act as our new lower seatbelt bolt. Well, I just only added one because the uh, inner rocker piece that I welded in back here, it's actually extended out towards the back so I should be able to weld the back of the rocker onto that. So I got a total of four rear rocker mounts that I can weld to on top of the sides, the front, and then we'll add the two frame supports. So I test fit the new rocker in a few times and I got it dialed in. I'll show you guys when we fully weld it in what to look for, but basically I'm ready to go here. So I got the inside ground down as you guys saw, so it's ready for some PUR15. So I'm gonna put a couple coats all on this inside hidden surface as well as the back side of the rocker that's gonna go on the inside of here as well. All right, so I got a couple coats of PUR15 on the inside of the rocker here, as well as the inside of the existing rocker. I left about an inch or so where it's gonna weld, and I'm gonna put some weld through primer there so that way it doesn't burn off uh, too much of the PUR15. Then pretty much we're gonna get this mocked up for the last time and start welding it in. One thing I did do with the front fender is actually add a nut cert over here, and I'll show you what I did for the front fender so that way it attaches still on the bottom. Now coming to the front side over here, basically what I did was cut the front fender where it comes down right in front of our new rocker, cut that flush with the top of the rocker, and even cut a little bit of the flare, so I'll have to figure out how to attach that a little bit since I want to keep these stock fender flares for now. But on the back side right here, I just took a little bit of that existing sheet metal, bent it 90 degrees, so that way um, there's a nice tab that sits on top here. And then I drill a hole through that tab, and now I got a quarter inch bolt I can fit through that nut cert that we put into the rocker, so it attaches the lower fender over here. So I'm gonna line up the holes and then thread this in a little bit now so that way it's lined up. It is kind of tight right in here. Um, if this was longer, you can always put that tab up there and then you got the hole inside of the fender to uh, work with. All right, so our new rocker is sitting pretty good in place. Um, one thing I'm checking right now is if it's level as far as this way, and I'm just doing that with a simple level. I know I got a jack on here, and I just jacked it up a little bit more, so it's not gonna read how I was before when I just had a little bit of pressure on here. Um, but I had to put a couple shims on the sides because the back end was too far up and I needed to drop it down just a little bit. Um, keep in mind that uh, since this uh, 2x6, it's actually welded on the bottom seam. It's not exactly flat, so it's kind of like bowed down a little bit. So that's why I'm mostly going up here. As you can see, it's not exactly level right there, but that's because it's jacked up now. But I just checked it before and just jacked it up a little bit more, so that way everything is nice and tight, and I got nice contact where I'm going to be welding. So I'm going to start tacking it in to the existing sheet metal here that I can weld to. Then later on, I'm going to start patching it up like up here um, where I had to cut out the rust and then back here um, towards the rear wheel well. And then we'll get from the underside, weld those tabs underneath, so that way it should be nice and solid in here. And then once we get this all patched up, we're gonna start working on the frame supports. All right guys, so before we start welding on that rocker on the passenger side, I do wanna take a quick moment to mention today's video sponsor. And that's by an Amazon store called XPCTD. Now these guys make a bunch of LED lights and accessories for Jeeps and other vehicles out there. Now today we're going to be taking a look at two different designs that they offer. I've actually had a set of lights from them from a year ago when I did another video sponsor and those are currently on my Jeep right now and I'm using them every day pretty much and I'm very impressed with the light output that they put on there. 
So let's take a quick look at the two new designs that they offer. All right, so now taking a look at these lights, I decided to go with the blacked out edition on both of these. Now on the left over here is your standard five by seven LED lights. These typically have the H4 connector like it is on the back. They also do come with an adapter right here. So if your wiring configuration is a little bit different, you can always flip around the wires to get it to fit your vehicle. Cause I know a few of them, they're a little bit different on there. But overall, pretty stout design, aluminum heat sink on the back. Really can't go wrong for the price on these. Now moving over to the right, now this is your standard circle seven inch LED housing. And these are pretty much gonna be found on your JK's, TJ's 97 inch round headlight configuration on a vehicle. Now these ones, they did come with an H4 connector on the back, but they also do come with a couple wiring adapters. Now over here, this does have an adapter for using on the JK's, I believe. They do have a different uh, design that Chrysler has right here. So this is just a quick an adapter that you can throw on there. They also do come with EMC. And basically what this does, it gets rid of any white noise that the LEDs uh, create. So that way you don't have any radio static or anything like that. And that just simply plugs and play with this as well. Now, if you guys are looking for these LED headlights, I got the links below as always. And if you're looking for the LEDs I currently have in my Jeep, I'll post that in the link below. So I'll make sure to post the link for the XPCTD Amazon store. They got a lot more lights other than just the five by seven and the seven inch ones. So you guys can check it out for your application. But right now, let's get back to the video. All right, so now that I got it tacked in on this front part, now I'm gonna start adding some stitch welds to kind of strengthen it up, and then we'll move on to the sides and then get the back and then fully weld it in so that way it's nice and solid. All right, so welding this thin sheet metal to this eighth inch is actually a little bit difficult. I had to dial in the uh, welder a little bit, adjust the uh, wire feed as well as the amperage um, to get good penetration. And if you're using the same welder that I am, um, which is a Lincoln Electric 140 on 120, 035 uh, flux core wire. I have it set on B2 and it seemed to work really well. But basically my technique was just to keep starting and stopping, um, making these little C's. I would start on the sheet metal here and I would end up on the uh, rocker. So keep dragging it through. That way I'm not putting too much heat onto the sheet metal and burning through and it seems to work out pretty well. And as you can see, the welds aren't really good up here um, as I was messing with the welder settings, but we can always grind that down later on so it's not so much of an eyesore. But it is pretty solid up here. I just have some stitch welds into place. Now I'm gonna go underneath and get the backside all uh, tacked in, and then we're gonna start fully welding it in and put those patch panels in. And so now for these tabs that we made earlier, we're simply just gonna take a hammer and fold it under the backside here. Actually, I might add some weld through primer in the backside here so that way there's no uh, rust forming in between this. Let that dry for a sec and then we'll put it back into place. Now I'll take the jack and uh, put a piece of wood under here so that way it holds it up against there and then we'll tack it into place. All right, so with that tacked in, I'll do the same thing with the other brackets that we got underneath and then start fully welding it in. All right, so moving on to the frame supports, I decided to go with two frame supports for each side. Um, so I cut them out of two by six pieces of steel right here. And first what I did was make some cardboard templates um, just from the side view on it. It seemed to be a lot easier to get the uh, severe angles that are going on. So, so this side's gonna weld to the rocker and this side's gonna weld to our frame stiffeners on the frame. I got some uh, weld through primer all sprayed on the inside and I ground off the paint on the frame and put some uh, weld through primer on that. So we're pretty much ready to go. Um, you can place these wherever you want. Um, I just found a couple spots on the frame where they're gonna work perfect. So let's get ready and weld these in. All 
Alright, so I got these guys mostly welded in place. It's kind of hard to weld upside down, so the welds aren't exactly perfect, but they're definitely going to hold. Got a lot of heat into there. So now the last thing I got to do is just plug these ends right here. So I'm just going to reuse some uh, metal that I cut off from the 2x4. Just cut off a little strip and then plug that in there and do the same thing with the other one. Alright, so we got those frame supports fully welded in and I think we're pretty much done with welding. I went and uh, patched up whatever I could with welding to the rocker with the existing uh, door sill right here that was rotted out. There's a couple blown through spots, but I'm going to take care of that with sealer because you try welding more and it just keeps making the hole bigger, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to scuff everything up now with a wire wheel on this rocker side. And at the same time, um, if you guys saw my previous video when I did the passenger floor, I didn't paint that yet. So I'm going to scuff up the inside and the underside as well and POR 15 this entire thing at the same time. And I'm probably going to come up to here with POR 15 on these pillars. And then once uh, we have a couple coats of that, I'm going to put some uh, spray on bed liner and I'm going to make a nice clean line up here, up there, and as well as on the A pillar. So everything's going to look nice. So I'm just going to get a uh, cup wire wheel on my angle grinder, go to town, get any surface rust off, any little bubbles, uh, rough up the paint a little bit so that way the POR 15 sticks. Then we'll start painting this. Alright, so I got everything wire wheeled and ground down. I didn't really grind down on the welds because I'm not too concerned about that. It's going to be hidden by the door anyway. But went and put some uh, mineral spirits over the whole thing, got it all cleaned up, and now we're pretty much ready to paint. Alright, so I've got a couple coats of POR15 on this and it's looking a lot better already. Um, now what I'm going to do is take some seam sealer. I'm using some uh, Dynatron uh, gray seam sealer. This is made by 3M. It's really good stuff. I've used it for the floors and I've used it for the unibody stiffeners and very impressed with it. Um, it is a little bit pricey, but definitely worth it. Um, so I'm going to fill in any imperfections, um, such as like little pinholes here and there, um, just from you know welding because it was so thin it just kept blowing through. If you want to, you could always use some Bondo or body filler to fill this in, but I don't have the time for that. And I'm not looking for a perfect finish, just something that's going to get protected and waterproof. So I'm going to go in, fill in any of the pinholes, maybe imperfections in the welds, just kind of smooth it out. And then we'll get ready to spray this with some spray add bed liner, and it should start looking really good. And with this stuff, it does dry fairly fast, so if you have to correct it with your finger, um, do it rather soon. I put a little bit of water on my finger, helps kind of smooth it out and not stick to your finger. And it might look a little bit messy when you're doing it right now, but once you paint over this, if you smooth it out nice enough with your finger, it should all blend in nicely. Alright, so I got everything all sealed up nicely and it's already pretty much dry to the touch. But I'll wait a little bit longer before I paint it, but right now I'm going to start prepping it for paint. Basically I'm going to paint all the way up on the pillar basically to where there's uh, no more rust. So I'm probably going to go up here on the B pillar and probably the same height on the A pillar and the C pillar. So I'm going to scuff up the existing paint a little bit so that way it sticks on. I'm going to start off with this Rust-Oleum uh, primer right here. Probably put a couple coats on there. Since this POR15 is dry, you're going to want to put a little bit of primer on there as well. If it's still a little bit tacky, you can get away with uh, top coating it right away. Um, but once we put a couple coats of primer on there, I'm going to use this Doobie Color Truck Bed Coating. I really like this stuff actually because it sprays on nicely and it looks well in the end. And if you really wanted to, you can actually clear coat it and it lasts a long time and helps uh, wipe and wash off any mud or dirt that's on there. I've done it on bumpers, I've done it on uh, existing rock sliders and trim on my last Jeep. Um, and it's you know held up well over the years, so I'm definitely going to use it again here. One thing to keep in mind, even though it does dry um, within 24 hours, dry to the touch at least, 
um, you can still dig your nail into it, so it's still a little bit soft. One thing I noticed with this, it actually takes two to three weeks to get like completely rock hard, so keep that in mind um, when you're doing this. So I'm going to get everything uh, prepped up, get everything scuffed, and I'm going to start masking off where I want all paint, and then we'll start putting some primer down, and then put some truck bed coating. So the rocker is all finished up and painted. It is a few days later now, so everything's nice and dry to the touch. So I'm pretty much going to end the video here. We do have a few more things that we got to do on this side, such as putting these step panels back into place. Um, I'm going to go and paint this with some plastic trim um, later on. I also got to put the doors back on and put some new lower door armor on there as well. But you guys will see that in the next video when I go over my new doors. But other than that, it turned out really nice. Everything is nice and sealed up. I just got to put this uh, little drain plug that was on the side here. Got to pop that back into place, but everything else is pretty much ready to go. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along if you're doing this project yourself. Um, it wasn't overly complicated. It just mostly takes a lot of time to get everything done um, as far as all the metal work and as well as painting too, laying some time in between there so it dries out. But for me on this project, I'm almost halfway done. I haven't even started on the driver's side as far as the floorboards. We've got to do the rockers and the doors on that side as well. But looking forward, once again, we're going to be getting the uh, doors all prepped for the passenger side with some new lower door armor and cleaning up any little rust that's on there as well. So as always, I'll leave the links in the description below on all the products that I use so you guys can pick it up for yourselves. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the Outjeeping YouTube channel. And if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.